So, what is architecture? Well, architecture, it's our life in a way. It's, uh, it's our profession, it's the place where we live, it's the product of our work. Um, more generally, I think that uh, architecture, it's, uh, it's the materialization of a cultural moment um, in, uh, in a specific place, in a specific moment. It's, uh, it's the way, it's almost like an open uh, book, a big book of history that shows what have been happening in a place and uh, the different uh, influences, the moments of prosperity and uh, um, political or cultural uh, differences uh, that are materialized physically in forms and in buildings where we live. Um, yeah. And uh, what can architecture do? Architecture could <laughs> do a lot <laughs> when it's used uh, uh, properly. It, uh, it can improve <laughs> the life of uh, people. It can, uh, architecture can uh, already in one way be very identitary and, uh, and uh, form identity of uh, places and, uh, and reinforce uh, this aspect. And uh, on another way, it can, uh, it can really affect our life in a way that it's uh, occupying a place or freeing the, the space for the public. Or in other aspects, uh, in the way that, uh, that it impacts uh, even environmentally uh, a space. Or doesn't impact and even improve. It's an issue that we're working a lot on of how not only a building cannot impact a place, but how can it actually improve, not only physically, but uh, in the, the environment itself, especially when it's in, um, in uh, areas that have uh, difficult issues of pollution and, uh, and uh, you know, different uh, problematics in the space. Uh, you talked about recycling before and uh, energetic um, qualities of a building. Yeah, we uh, we always try in in the sense of uh, reducing the impact of uh, the building to to use in a way methods that are really specific to uh, to the place. Uh, trying to uh, to focus on what are the characteristic of the, of this. Uh, place and how this can be used for um, uh, reducing the, the energy. We have finished recently the Estonian uh, National Museum and there, for example, one of the most uh, um, energetically consumptive uh, areas are the archives. There are 10,000 square meters of uh, archives of ethnographic uh, objects which are very delicate. In, uh, as, a, as an object, as a material, and uh, the main uh, uh, issue to preserve or to achieve is uh, the constancy of the, of the temperature and, and the humidity, which normally in uh, general uh, in this type of uh, building uh, require a lot of uh, energy because uh, to keep this uh, constant energy, of course, with uh, exterior environment, it's, uh, it's very delicate. So in our building, an example of uh, how this, uh, how we achieved a, a passive uh, a consumption uh, of energy in these conditions, uh, the, uh, the way that the archives were done, there is basically no technology, it's, uh, it's very low technology, but just by placing the, um, all the archives in the basement of the building, Already this is uh, giving uh, a full uh, insulation from the outside, so it's completely not affected from the outside. And all the materials of the walls in the, um, in the archives, they are all uh, made with a special uh, Danish technology that uh, can actually absorb uh, humidity when it's needed and release it when it's needed. So without any energy, it's like a sponge that, uh, that leave and release uh, energy. So it's an example of how we can achieve basically a reduction of, uh, of a very big amount of energy without special technology or but just with uh, architectural choices. And what is your architectural position? Well, it's difficult uh, to say what is our position, but 
in a way I can say how, how we are thinking architecture. It's uh, we, we are not actually starting from forms or from uh, sketches. Our process is more about uh, researching uh, traces of, uh, of the identity of a place or a person or, or a brain in some cases when we work on, uh, on uh, projects that are more ephemeral and experiential. So we are looking for all, uh, all type of uh, elements from the history, from the identity, from the culture, from the site. And uh, all these traces for us are a bit like uh, archaeological um, traces that we put together to create a future. So this process is uh, it's a group process of uh, research where uh, the elements are coming together and evolving for eventually bringing out a building that is not a gesture, but it is really coming out from, uh, from a specific uh, place in a specific moment. And can you tell us uh, something about your design method? So yeah, in a way, this is the, the design uh, uh, method. This is a, it's being a, a group, actually our office, it's, uh, it's uh, composed by uh, different uh, cultures and different uh, people from different nationalities, from different uh, uh, ages, from different uh, break background. So uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, situation is uh, it's forcing us in a way to not work on, uh, yeah, on gesture or, or just on formal uh, architecture, but more on, uh, yeah, on a research process that it's uh, uh, that each person and each uh, competence is bringing together in uh, different elements that uh, eventually become uh, a project but it's um, this is in a way it's it's like a yeah an evolution uh, process where things are, are filtered it's not very much uh, like an emotional uh, project, even if, of course, everything it's uh, it's about a dream that kind of comes together. But it's it's a group, uh, a dream, and what this is making it's uh, is creating a situation where it's not when we do a building, it's not so much a monument for the architect, or it's uh, it's more really a, a, a product of uh, of the people that are asking it, this. And this actually was a big success in, uh, in the Estonian National Museum. At, uh, the authorities, when uh, we won the competition, they, they actually said that they chose this project because this is not about the architect, but this is really about themselves. They really feel this as their own own. So in this way, in this process, it's, <laughs> it's the way that, uh, that we do.